Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video we will be talking about the replenishment oil type ships from the Military Sea Lift Command of the U.S. Military. Please remember to like and subscribe. All right, fact one. Military Sea Lift Command. All of the replenishment oilers actually do not necessarily belong to the United States Navy. They are actually part of the Military Sea Lift Command, which is under the United States Navy, but operated as sort of an individual component. The Military Sea Lift Command has the responsibility for providing transport especially across oceans for all military services, not just the Navy. It is the main function where they have a core fleet of ships owned by the United States Navy. Their primary function is to replenish and resupply all the other militaries of the United States. The Military Sea Lift Command are designated USNS instead of USS. They also have a T prefix. The crew is usually civilian with some military people for force protection and operate weapons and countermeasures. All right, let's get into the next fact. Fact two, oil and dry goods. Despite the name replenishment oilers, these ships are fully fledged supply ships, if you will. Not only do they carry necessary oil and diesel, for example. For all the ships, they also have a separate dock for dry goods and so you can think of these ships not just as a huge oil tanker since oil tankers really just have entire transports of liquid cargo. These replenishment oilers have a separate component for packaged dry goods, probably in pallets and boxes and so. It's incredibly useful to combine both supplies into one single ship otherwise. Can you imagine trying to resupply oil and gas and at the same time dry goods and I need it in two ships instead of one? It makes a lot more resource and logistical sense to have one ship serve dual purposes. There are other types of recipe ships like submarine tender for example. However, they don't carry any fuel or oil. This particular ship is indeed more versatile than other types supply ships. Supply ships are critical to the forward operating attack ships in order to prolong the capabilities of war fighting and sustained deployment in remote locations. Let's get into the next fact. Fact 3. Limited self-defense because these ships are really just for transporting stuff across ocean. They don't have too much armaments. In fact, they have very limited self-defense capabilities. Generally, these ships contain multiple 50 caliber machine guns armed on the sides, as well as closing weapon systems such as anti-air tracking defense weapons to destroy incoming missiles and enemy aircraft. There's also a cram component where it could fire off small lightweight infrared home and surface to air missiles to protect itself against anti-ship missiles. There are also some anti-sea mines and torpedo countermeasures, but that is about it. Generally, these ships need to be part of a strike group where it has a lot of armed escorts from destroyers frigates and even aircraft carriers so that the enemy cannot get to this ship and complete destroy a forward operating group's critical supplies. These ships absolutely cannot operate by themselves in an enemy territory because they would probably destroy very quickly if the enemy has advanced capabilities in naval operations. It is most likely that if a carrier strike group is under attack these ships will probably try to veer off and go to the safe zone as soon as possible because they really cannot defend themselves. The military systems are likely to be operated by Navy or Army personnel instead of civilians. The ship can only defend itself briefly due to the limited weapons and also absolutely no offensive weapons at all. Even if this ship passes by a fleeing enemy ship, they don't have any capabilities to attack it. All right, let's get into the next fact. Fact four, helicopter flight deck. Another very deceiving aspect of these replenishment oilers is the fact that they actually have a flight deck. You may think that a huge cargo transport for oil gas or dry goods wouldn't need a helicopter flight deck. However, these replenishment oilers have a flight deck in the rear. You can land military helicopters in order to perhaps some kind of situation where you need to evacuate personnel or to get some immediate urgent dry goods and ferry them back to another ship. I think it's very useful to have a flight deck on any type of naval warship or even a cargo ship because you never know when you need them and you also never know when the helicopter could come in super handy in terms of medical evacuation or some kind of special situation where VIP person needs to get off the oiler and go to the aircraft carrier, for example, so having the flight deck really extends the capability of these replenishment oilers and extend their functionality and versatility. However, as this is not intended for naval aviation specifically, there is no aviation support. 
The helicopter is designed to lead the ship upon completion of the mission and is unlikely to be stored in staying on the ship. I would be surprised if they decide against this and deploy a permanent helicopter on the ship. If that is the case, they will likely need to station aviation mechanics on the ship, which is completely unrelated to the core mission and purpose of the ship. All right, let's get into the next and final fact, diesel powered. Despite the fact that these replenishment oilers need to travel long distance across vast oceans, they are just powered by conventional diesel. I am not too sure though how much consumption these replenishment oilers take because these are massive ships and with something massive is the most likely that they need to expend a lot of power in engines to drive forward. Now these don't go fast, their top speed is only 20 knots, however it probably burns a lot of diesel. Unfortunately, it doesn't make sense to have a nuclear-powered replenishment oiler simply because of the risks and complexities and the fact that this particular ship contains vast reserves of oil and gas for other ships, it probably wouldn't have an issue of running out because if it's running out for its own use, it simply taps into the cargo hold and retrieve diesel gas that way and so these replenishment oilers are likely going to stay diesel power for a very long time because because frankly there's no other alternatives for massive seagoing vessels such as this one. Diesel engines are by far the most common marine engines and also much less complexity in terms of maintenance and service as compared to nuclear. There does not seem to be any other types of common marine propulsion technology and so really diesel is the best choice. Frankly other naval warships are mostly diesel anyway, it kind of makes sense to keep this as diesel as well. Alright, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.